I actually acquired a duplex in 2010 that had a Housing Choice Voucher resident who had raised her family there and went in with an open mind and it has been a wonderful experience. The low income housing need in Grand Rapids is dramatic. Most property managers would require a two and a half times or more uh, rent in the form of your income. The voucher program gives that independence. It uh, allows folks to have that, uh, that quality and affordability that uh, without the voucher is just not possible uh, in the market condition that we have right now. Mishta makes the process easy. Their program has opted to uh, contract with community housing advocates, and community housing advocates understands the landlords, I think, really well. And um, they're able to process documents more rapidly, handle inspections more rapidly. Pretty much everything that they do is just the gold standard. I would say, by and large, housing voucher tenants are long-term. It's great for community, it's great for cost. These families are just like any of us. Many of them uh, have been through some tough times or had a, a few bad turns, but there's a, a whole bunch out there that'll take great care of the properties, that are very respectful of the um, financial obligations and, and are exemplary tenants. Don't let the voucher status deter because the real story is in the application. Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to the Michigan State Housing Development Authority's Housing Choice Voucher Program for Landlords. Yes, this is an engagement for and about landlords, and we are excited to be with you on today. My name is Van Adams, and I'm proud to be your moderator during what is promised to be an impactful event. You want to stick around for this event because we have the most up-to-date and relevant information for landlords and aspiring landlords. But this event, by the way, is closed captioned, and this broadcast is available through the Detroit Public Television's Facebook and YouTube page. So make sure you tell all of your friends that they can view us that way as well. The Michigan State Housing Development Authority is your state housing agency, affably called MISTA, and its Housing Choice Voucher Program is leading the way in providing ways to attain affordable housing. So today, you'll hear firsthand from people like MISTA's Chief Housing Solutions Officer and our Director of Rental Assistance, as well as our manager of policy for housing choice voucher and some of our special guests. Yes, we, we came ready for you tonight. This event is all about connecting the dots to assist our landlords in learning more about our housing choice voucher program. But not only that, our aim is to give you some tools and resources to help you become better landlords so you can provide valuable services to our communities. More importantly, this is an interactive event, which means there will be opportunities for us to hear directly from you. And as a matter of fact, you can feel free to pose a question by using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Now, I want you to note that the Q&A button is a little different from the chat button. If you have a question, you want to use the Q&A button. But if you're looking for valuable links and information, then you'll see that in the chat room. All right, I'll be back later to make sure you understand that process. All right, hey, you know what time it is? It's time to get started. So first up, let's bring to you one of our revered Mr. Leaders and one that is a driving force behind housing and rental assistance. So please welcome now our Chief Housing Solutions Officer, Ms. Kelly Rose. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you, Van. 
Uh, I just want to welcome everybody today and to give you a big thanks for uh, taking your time to learn more about the Housing Choice Voucher Program and some of the, the recent changes we've been making to the program to really try to recruit more new landlords. Um, we know that the housing market is really tight out there and people are having a tough time finding rental units. Uh, and we have tenants that are um, ready and have housing choice vouchers that are looking for places to live. Uh, so we really hope that you'll take this information in today, um, learn how to uh, contact our program and to become a housing choice voucher landlord. Uh, so thank you for joining us today and uh, I'll turn it back over to Van. Hey, thank you, Kelly. And we know that you will be around a little later on to answer some of those questions from our audience. Yes. In just a few moments, you'll want to hear more about the meat of our Housing Choice Voucher Program. Many of you know this program by the name of Section 8. Yes, the Housing Choice Voucher Program is the infamous Section 8 program as well. But before we go there, we want to engage our audience by asking you a question. Yeah, I think it's time to go to our first poll question. Now, poll question is an opportunity for you to get involved. As you can see on our screen, we have our first question. It reads, please select the option that best fits your background or organization. I'll repeat, please select the option that best fits your background or organization. Is it current Mr. Housing Choice Voucher, private landlord? Or are you a current Mr. Housing Choice Voucher, multifamily property owner? How about you are a current Mr. Housing Choice Voucher, property management company? Or you're not participating in Mr.'s Housing Choice Voucher Program currently. Maybe you are a faith-based organization, a realtor, a housing agent, or a horror service agency. If you are one of them, please click one of those choices. All right. And the survey comes back. We have 42%, 42% is our highest uh, survey amount here of not currently participating in Mr.'s Housing Choice Voucher Program. Wow, all right. We'll talk to that in just a few moments. <laughs> all right, let's move ahead now. Um, at this time, I'd like to bring forward uh, someone that is a uh, program manager uh, for our Housing Choice Voucher Program. And here to tell us more is the Director of Rental Assistance and Homeless Solutions, my good friend, Miss Kelly. I'm sorry, Miss Lisa Chemis. Welcome, Lisa. <laughs> thank you, Van, very much. And good evening, everyone. And thank you once again for joining us to learn more about Mishta's Housing Choice Voucher Program or HCV program. You may hear us refer to it as throughout this presentation and certainly the benefits it has to offer you as landlords. Um, and based on that first poll question, we have representation from a variety of organizations um, with us this evening, which is great to see so that we can help get out the word. So next slide, please. So we have four main topics we wanted to discuss with you this evening. First is to provide you with a brief overview of MISHTA's HCV program, because we may operate it differently than other agencies um, within the state of Michigan. Um, how do you become a landlord in MISHTA's Housing Choice Voucher Program? The benefits of participating in the program, and then a couple of incentive programs that we offer our MISHTA landlords. Next slide, please. So MISHTA is the largest public housing authority or PHA in the country administering the HCV program on behalf of HUD. So we have an allocation of vouchers in all 83 counties, currently assisting about 28,000 families across the state with rental assistance. And while our coverage area or our jurisdiction is statewide, so we can help families in all 83 counties, 
There are other uh, PHAs within Michigan that may operate the HCV program or other rental assistance programs, but their coverage area or jurisdiction is going to be smaller in nature. Generally, um, a city ran program, county program, and in some instances, some PHAs may operate the program in multiple counties. Um, but while we all report to HUD and we all receive our funding directly from HUD, our programs may vary from PHA to PHA um, as allowed under the federal regulations. So what we have done is we've dropped into the chat for you a couple of, of important items. The first is a link to MISHTA's HCV administrative plan that will provide you with more policy specific information on how MISHTA administers the HCV program. And then we also placed a link um, to MISHTA's HCV landlord page that will provide information regard, regarding landlord guidelines, um, uh, payment information is released to the HCV program, and then those two incentive programs that we're gonna talk about in greater detail um, later in the presentation. So generally, um, families on the HCV program are required to pay at least 30% of their adjusted monthly income towards the rent to the owner and any tenant paid utilities that they're responsible for. And then MISHTA will enter into a housing assistance payment uh, contract or HAP contract with the owner of that rental unit to make monthly payments uh, for the remainder of the rent on behalf of that family. Um, our payments are made direct deposit right into your bank account to ensure timely receipt of those funds. Um, MISHTA's program is primarily tenant-based in nature, meaning the assistance follows the family. So once the family is determined eligible for the program, they conduct their housing search for the unit type they wish to occupy. That could be a single family home, it could be an apartment, a duplex, a townhome. And then provided that the unit meets all program requirements, um, it can be approved for tenancy and then program participation for the landlord. We do also operate what we call a project-based voucher program whereby the assistance is tied to specific units in a multifamily property where the owner of that property has agreed to set aside those units to, um, to target supportive housing populations, such as uh, families or individuals experiencing homelessness, or maybe families and, and individuals that are experiencing domestic violence situations. And then we also do have a, a small pool of what we call special purpose vouchers um, that we receive directly from HUD, again, targeted to specific populations, such as our homeless veterans, our homeless youth, as well as individuals and families that are non-elderly and disabled. We do currently have about 30,000 families on our waiting list, and we do grant a homeless preference and partner with the local housing assessment and resource agencies or HARAs um, who are directly at the local community level who actually identify um, these homeless individuals and families, place them on our waiting list. And then once we are able to house um, these individuals and families, they're available to provide case management services to ensure housing retention. Now, if we do not have homeless applicants on the waiting list when a voucher becomes available, then the next family that um, is prioritized and selected for assistance um, is a disabled individual or family. We do contract out the administration of the program to 13 entities across the state of Michigan, which we refer to as housing agents. Um, many of our housing agents have 20 plus years experience with MISHTA and in the HCV program. Um, so certainly they, they come to the table with a wealth of knowledge and experience. So they work directly with uh, HCV landlords, HCV families to ensure that this valuable resource is um, delivered uh, effectively, efficiently, and timely at the community level. Um, in turn, the MISHTA staff then is responsible for the oversight and um, monitoring of our housing agents and their activities based on their contractual obligations with MISHTA. And later on in the presentation, we'll give a breakdown of MISHTA's roles through the HCV program, as well as the MISHTA housing agent roles. So next slide, please. So this slide basically illustrates the collaboration and the partnership between MISHTA, the HCV family, and the HCV landlord. Um, you'll, you'll see there's some um, important roles and responsibilities that are noted um, for each partner along the way. 
Um, but the key uh, point to, to make note of here is there's basically three contracts that, um, that uh, are executed throughout the lease up process. So once MISHTA um, or the MISHTA housing agent determines that a family is eligible for the program, then the MISHTA housing agent and the family, they basically execute what we call the voucher. So the voucher is issued to the family and that's their opportunity to hit the ground running and, and begin their, their housing search process. So the family goes out, they're in their housing search process, they find your rental unit, you approve them for tenancy. And then um, once the unit is approved by the MISHTA housing agent, the family and you, the landlord, enter into that lease agreement. Um, now to note here, MISHTA is not a party to the tenant landlord lease. That's a contract between you and the family. However, the lease is reviewed by the MISHTA housing agent to ensure that it meets the program requirements. And then once that lease is approved, um, then the MISHTA housing agent and the landlord, they execute the housing assistance payment or the HAP contract, um, which really is the triggering event to commence payments to you as the landlord. Next slide, please. So again, uh, the breakdown of MISTA's role it, throughout the HCV process and then the housing agent role. So again, MISTA's role is we are the direct recipient of the funding from HUD. So with that comes the ultimate oversight and responsibility of the program. So we must ensure that um, not only our MISTA housing agents, but our MISTA staff are in compliance with all the federal regulations and our standing operating procedures. And as I mentioned earlier, we monitor the activities and performance of our housing agents to ensure they're in line with the contractual obligations that they, they um, agreed to. We are responsible for the waiting list administration. So as vouchers become available, we are the um, responsible entity to select the next, the next names from the waiting list, provide those names to our housing agents so they then can begin the eligibility process. We also monitor the waiting list status to ensure um, that we're opening the waiting list to accept new applicants um, as needed. We are responsible for all the reporting to HUD. So we are reporting monthly to HUD on our family activity. And then we also are responsible to submit an annual certification on our performance to HUD. Um, landlord outreach, why we're here tonight. This um, in engagement event, um, we're responsible to ensure we're, we're doing our due diligence to um, bring new landlords on board, um, update landlords on our programs, get input from our landlords on um, enhancement we, enhancements we can make. So um, certainly this is a, a big um, effort tonight and more of a, a statewide collaboration um, on, our, on our part, but um, certainly that's a big piece in what we're responsible for as well. And then finally, making certain that we are utilizing the funding that HUD is providing us at an optimal level in order to provide this valuable resource to the families that we serve. Next slide, please. So the MISHTA housing agent role, again, they are responsible for determining that a family's eligibility for the program. They, um, they issue the voucher to the family so they can begin their housing search process. They too are responsible for landlord recruitment and outreach efforts. So by, again, we're doing this big event tonight. They're working in the, um, on the community level um, and meeting with landlord associations, um, doing additional outreach to existing HCV landlords, um, recruitment efforts through the local continuum care bodies, just to get the word out that you know we're 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 in need of uh, additional landlords to participate in the program, getting the um, the the feelers out to where are there additional units available for our families as they. Um, are in that housing search process because we do, as Kelly indicated earlier, we have a lot of families out there with vouchers in hand looking for available and affordable rental housing units. Our housing agents are responsible for co conducting the uh, housing quality standards inspection or HQS inspection. That's a HUD inspection with specific requirements. So they determine that the unit um, meets those standards. Again, they review your um, tenant landlord lease agreement. They determine the rent that you're requesting as the owner is reasonable based on federal regulations, but also affordable based on um, federal regulations for the family. They enter into the HAP contract with you on behalf of MISHTA. They are responsible for enforcing the HCV rules um, and regulations to the family. You are, as the landlord, are, are responsible for enforcing the lease obligations. And then they are responsible for 
um, conducting interim and annual recertifications of the family. So at least annually, the family has to re-verify their eligibility for the program. But also at any time during their tenancy where there could be a change in family composition or a change in income, um, the family is required to report that to the housing agent because we want to ensure at all times the tenant is paying the, the proper portion of the rent to you as the owner and that Mr. Hap payment reflects the proper payment as well. And so in, within the chat, um, we have placed a link um, to the Mishta Housing Agent contact list that we have on our webpage. You can um, access that link and you can search um, for your housing agent for the counties in which your properties are located um, to ensure that you have that proper kind of connectivity with our housing agents. Next slide, please. So who are the, pro, uh, the, uh, the families that we're currently assisting in our HCV program? Um, currently our average household income is just over uh, 12,600. Our average family size is two. Our average head of household is age 50. 24% um, of our um, uh, head of households are elderly with 50% being disabled. And then 33% of our current participants have been uh, participating in the program for more than 10 years with the average length of tenancy in a unit or under a lease agreement is 4.5 years. So certainly our HCB uh, families are long-term stable renters. And Van, with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to you for our second poll question. All right, Lisa, thank you so much. And before we get to that second poll question, I just was, uh, amazed by the diversity of the Housing Choice Voucher Program in terms of what it has to offer. Uh, it really is a great product. And I'm sure that our audience that's viewing right now, uh, close to a thousand people just on this platform, and then we have other platforms, but many, many people uh, are wondering, uh, because you asked about uh, or you told us that there were about 30,000 people on the waiting list, 30,000. I, I don't know about you, but it sounds like a large number. Um, that's one of the questions that I have. And then I have a second question, but can you tell us why the waiting list is so long? That's a very good question, Van. And um, certainly, I, um, it certainly demonstrates the need for more affordable housing rental assistance um, within the state of Michigan than unfortunately what we and other PHAs in the state of Michigan have been, Michigan have been afforded by, um, by HUD. I, we realize you know, this, this program, um, according to the HUD regulations, really deep targets um, you know, low, extremely low to low-income families. And um, we realize the need outweighs um, what we can currently as assist, but certainly um, um, we, uh, you know, as vouchers become available, um, we certainly are, are selecting names from the waiting list, giving families the opportunity to be added to that waiting list because we never know um, when we may get additional funding from HUD and every opportunity we have that we can apply for more vouchers, certainly MISTA takes advantage of. And I think sometimes in certain communities, the list may be longer than in other communities. Can a person apply in a different community where that waiting list may be shorter? Well, that's another very good question. Um, under MISTA's program, um, you know, in order, you have to demonstrate, um, I'll, you have to demonstrate proof of living or working in the county of application. So if you're either living or working in the county of application, you really should apply to, to that specific county. Um, because um, while I understand that, yes, some waiting lists are, sh are shorter or longer than others, um, it's really to your benefit to apply to the, the, the county that you have residency, which residency is defined as either living or working in that county. Fantastic. You know, Lisa, you're helping to dim d demystify uh, a lot of what's going on, and I, I'm sure our audience appreciates that. I do have a uh, one final question before we go to our poll, and this came through our Q&A, uh, and it says, is Sarah 
uh, separate from section eight? And how do we help our tenants transition from section eight once CIRA it runs out? And again, section eight is the housing choice voucher program. Sure. So the, the two pro programs are separate programs, although housing choice voucher program participants um, can and have access Sarah funds for um, for rental arrears and future arrears assistance, they are two separate programs. So if somebody is a recipient of Sarah funds, but not on the voucher program, um, certainly um, um, they would be encouraged to, to apply to our waiting list um, as they are open. And later in the presentation, there will be a link to our, our waiting list page that provides information as to when our, our waiting lists are open. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. I think it's time now to get to poll number two. Let's put that on the screen. All right. Poll number two asks the question, what is your main barrier to participating in Mr.'s Housing Choice Voucher Program? Is it timeliness of Mr. approval of the rental unit? How about Housing Choice Voucher paperwork and documentation? Or rent limitations? Or frequent unit turnover and tenant damages? Or how about not familiar with the process? All right, drum roll, please. Let's now see the results. And the results are in. And we have 40% that are saying they're just not familiar with the process. Well, I'm glad you told us that because we're going to fix that by the time this program is over. All right. <laughs> All right. With that, thank you for participating in our poll number two. We have uh, one final poll that's coming up soon, but we're going to turn it back over to our good friend, Lisa, who's going to take us further. Back to you, Lisa. Thank you again, Fan. And just to follow up to that poll question, yes, I'm excited that um, um, those folks that are not familiar with the process are on the line with us to hear more about Mr.'s Housing Choice Voucher Program. But I did note that um, some of the other um, options that were selected that um, that were um, higher in the, high in the percentage as well was um, um, the rent limitations as well as um, unit um, turnover and damages. So not to um, jump ahead to what Deidre has to share um, later in the presentation, but um, you know, Mr. has been um, uh, actively looking at its policies, policies and procedures and making enhancements to the program. Um, we're allowed under the regulations to make this program, you know, certainly more attractive and enticing to landlords. And, and one of the things that we have recently implemented is a 10% increase in our payment standard for the program. So basically the maximum rental limit, um, you know, across the state of Michigan. So we have increased our payment standards by 10%. So that certainly boosts um, uh, the rent potential for you as landlords out there. Um, and then uh, later in the presentation, Deidre is going to talk about a landlord incentive program um, as it relates to unit turnover and damages to the unit. So um, certainly I, I hope that will be beneficial for you as well. So with that, we'll go to the next slide, please. Um, so how to become a Mr. Landlord? And um, it really is as simple as marketing your property to our HCD participants. Um, the first step would be, again, to get you connected with that MISHTA housing agent in the county where your units are located. Our housing agents maintain a comprehensive list of current HCV landlords that are participating in the program, as well as prospective landlords um, that are willing to make their units available to our families. Um, and certainly they provide that list to our HCV families that are out there in that housing search process to really expedite the, the the process from voucher issuance to, to lease up. Um, certainly that would not only benefit our families, but you um, as a property owner with um, vacant units. So certainly get connected to our Mishita housing agents. Um, we also encourage landlords to um, list their property for free on the uh, affordablehousing.com registry. Um, this registry is the, uh, the nation's largest registry for affordable housing information. Um, it's very intuitive. You're able to 
almost immediately connect with families that are out there searching um, for rental units similar to yours, or maybe um, also um, um, accessing the site and, and, and there's hits on, on the units that you have listed. So it's, it's almost like a direct and immediate link to families that are out there searching for, for uh, available units. And then certainly um, connect with your local, your local realtor association. They, all, they also have tips um, they could share with you on marketing efforts um, and or re the referrals for um, uh, families to your units or provide assistance um, with you um, conducting those uh, marketing efforts. So with that, we've also placed in the chat for you um, the link to the affordablehousing.com registry, as well as a link to the um, uh, Michigan Realtor Association page. Next slide, please. So how do you ultimately as a landlord participate in the program? So this is your process. This is, this is really a key slide for all of you that indicated you're, you're not participating in the program right now. So um, basically um, the, the family presents them themselves to you um, looking to um, rent your unit. So you, you screen that family for tenancy based on your, your established uh, screening criteria that you have. Um, if you approve them for tenancy in your unit, you complete what we call the request for tenancy approval form. This form provides detailed information regarding your rental unit, such as uh, the unit type and structure, the number of bedrooms it has, the rent that you're requesting as the owner, uh, the utilities that you may be responsible for paying, the utilities that the family will, will be responsible for paying. And then you take that, that request for tenancy approval um, and submit it to the Mishta housing agent along with proof of ownership of your property as well as proof of paid taxes. And then the housing agent will take that information and, 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 and process it. So that, again, they have to determine that the rent you're requesting is affordable, or excuse me, reasonable based on the regulations, but affordable to the fam family based on regulations. And then um, they immediately then uh, schedule that inspection, that housing quality inspection of your rental unit. Um, once your unit passes the HQS inspection, the Mishta housing agent will contact you and the family um, and give you the approval to enter into that lease agreement. So the, uh, you and the family will sign that lease agreement. And then in turn, you'll provide a copy of that signed lease agreement to our to the Mishta housing agent. And then that's the, that's the point when you and the housing agent get to enter into that HAP contract for payments to um, uh, commence on behalf of the family. So again, it's um, the tenant's responsible for paying at least 30%, but no more than 40% um, of their income um, towards the rent. And then Mishta issues you that um, monthly HAP payment um, for the remainder of the rent. So uh, just to keep um, uh, point I want to make on, on this slide in particular is it really having your unit ready for that HQS inspection. Um, certainly that is what really expedites the process, having, having that, that unit ready um, for the inspection. So we have placed into the chat once again for you a couple of items, a couple of links. One is um, a frequently asked document about HQS inspections. And then also a link to Mishta's HQS manual that will provide you more detailed information on Mishta's uh, requirements for the housing quality standard inspection. So certainly um, access those, those resources because that, that will ensure that your unit is ready um, for that unit inspection. And certainly that is what's going to expedite the process um, so that payments can um, begin quicker than, than later. So with that, Van, I am going to turn it back over to you. All right, thank you, Lisa. I'm, I'm really enamored with this landlord process uh, because for the many landlords that are viewing or aspiring landlords, I'm sure this is very helpful in uh, trying to determine the timeline, for example, of how long this process uh, may take. Uh, I know we've had some conversations before, but uh, I'd love for you to share with our audience in your estimation or guesstimation, uh, how long would this process typically take? 
you know, I, I wish I could, I wish I could give like a, a, a great time frame, like start to finish. Um, I, I, I certainly, um, the key point is that I, I, what I really want to bring home again on this slide is, you know, once, once landlord, um, once you are ready and you you want to, you've approved that family for tenancy, the sooner you get that request for tenancy approval, proof of your paid taxes, proof of ownership of the property to the housing agent, that inspection can be conducted within days. Um, and certainly if you, the, 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 best that you do to your ability to have the unit ready for the HQS inspection, that's what's gonna move it along. So um, time frame, it's, it's, it's this, this part, it's, it's hard to put like from start to finish or from you know, you know, X amount of days to X amount of days, but certainly um, the, 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 the best that you can do as a landlord on your end to have a full package to the housing agent and ready for that inspection and have your unit ready for inspection. Because once that unit passes inspection, that's when the housing agent base approves the move-in, which then commences the payments to you. So um, it's really important to, to have the, that complete package and that inspection ready, or that unit ready for inspection, I'm sorry. Have that complete package and that unit ready for inspection is the key according to Lisa Kimmis. All right, thank you, Lisa. You know, I heard from your presentation some key points here. One was you can get your property listed for free. That's great uh, because you know a lot of the landlords need to vet uh, who's occupying their, their property, but you can list that property for free on affordablehousing.com, uh, which is uh, in our chat, as well as you have access to housing agents and uh, reaching out to realtors are also a key component. So thank you for sharing that uh, with us, Lisa. Listen, folks, I want to let those uh, folks know that if you are putting a question in our Q&A, that's where you want to put your question in our Q&A uh, section there, not the chat, but in the Q&A. And uh, we will try our best to get to some of your questions, try to make them as precise and as brief as you can. Guess what though? We're going to spend an extra 30 minutes after the conclusion of this program just answering as many of your questions as we possibly can. So these experts that are coming on today, they're going to stick around just for you. All right, let's keep the show moving here. And so now, uh, there's still much more to cover. Next up, to show us the money and to give us information about Landlord Incentives Program is the HCV Policy Manager. Her name is Miss Deidre Butterworth. Welcome, Deidre. Uh, thank you, Van. Uh, also, thank you, Lisa, for that really great overview of the program and, and the steps for a landlord. Uh, I want to start today with going over some housing choice voucher myth busting and facts. So next slide, please. Number one, landlords can't charge HCV participants the same rent as their non-HCV tenants. This is false. Landlords can charge the full rent no matter who the tenant is. The housing authority, MISHTA, must determine the proposed rent is reasonable and not higher than the units in the area with similar amenities. Number two, housing choice voucher tenants are problem tenants. This is false. Remember, our tenants are usually long-term. Uh, they're staying in their units around eight years. There are no documented statistics showing that HCV participants are any more likely to damage units or not pay rent than are your non-HCV tenants. Landlords, please use your own screening criteria and, should, and you should screen your HCV tenants as you would screen any other tenant. Next, it's almost impossible to evict a housing choice voucher tenant when they violate the lease. This is false. Your HCV tenants are bound by the terms of their rental agreement and are subject to eviction just as your, any of your non-HCV tenants. And lastly, if you accept one housing choice voucher tenant, then all your units must be rented to HCV tenants. This is also false. Renting to one HCV tenant does not further obligate you to rent to other HCV tenants. 
for each vacancy, follow your established policies. We're dropping here in the chat now also a, a link to show you HUD, the Department of Housing and Urban Development's Landlord Resources page. There's a lot of information there, but I think it's a good place for you to take a look around about what HUD says about the program. So next slide, please. Lisa has talked a little bit about the benefits for Housing Choice Voucher landlords, but I wanted to pinpoint a few things. We provide another opportunity for you to find tenants. Uh, really here at Mischa, we can do the work for you. All you have to do is reach out to your local housing agent and then list your property on affordablehousing.com and marketing is done. We also send the subsidy payment directly to you every single month without fail by direct deposit. We have a partner portal where you can access online your payment history for each tenant uh, anytime you need to. You may request annual reasonable rent increases. We encourage you that you, you take a look and see uh, every year if you're ready for a rent increase to make that request to your housing agent and we can do a review right away to see if that is allowable. We, uh, again, Lisa uh, talked about this as well, but we increased our payment standards by 10% across the entire state. If you reach out to your local housing agent, they can give you the exact numbers for each bedroom unit size in your county. And lastly, I wanted to talk about how important it is that you get to help extremely low income individuals, elderly, disabled, veteran households, and families with children by giving affordable housing in your communities. I'm going to turn it back to Van now. All right, Deidre, I love that facts and myth busting activity. That was great. And I think we are ready for our third and final poll. All right, let's go to that third and final poll and see what question we have. The question is, what policies or procedures would you recommend, we're talking about you out there in the audience, to increase landlord participation? Would it be streamline landlord housing choice voucher paperwork? Or how about better communication with the housing quality standards unit requirements? Or mitigation efforts with tenant lease violations? Or increases in owner rent potential? And finally, better understanding of housing choice voucher tenant and landlord obligations. Why don't you take a moment and choose one of those answers as we take our final poll for today. All right, time's about up. Let's see what the results are. And the results are in. And the highest mark is 26% for this poll. And it says mitigation efforts with tenant lease violations. Mitigation efforts with tenant lease violation. And close behind at 24% is better understanding of housing choice voucher tenant. All right. So, Deidre? Turn it back over to you. You could tell us what some of this poll questions, what, what is this all about? So uh, thanks everyone for doing the polls. Uh, this last poll is, you know, I think we got the right person. I'm the policy manager here for the House Choice Voucher Program and your thoughts on this are really important to us. So the polls are, you know, we're collecting that information and we are taking a good look at what you said and making sure that we respond. The one that was interesting is the mitigation efforts um, for violations. I will say if we have anyone on the call here that's, I know we do, that's already a, a landlord, please make sure that if you are having these kinds of problems that you reach out to your housing agent right away. We require, you know, you must report it. We've got to know. So that's the, um, the most important thing about the poll, but we are recording this information and we do want to respond and do everything we can to make it easier for you as landlords. Uh, next slide, please. So 
So I get to do the best part. Uh, we have a few uh, landlord incentive programs happening here at Mishta. Number one is that Mishta is offering a $600 move-in incentive fee to landlords from June 1st, 2022 through the end of this year, December 31st, 2022. This is for every single new move-in that happens in this time frame. You get $600. It's yours, no strings attached. And then next, we continue to make available damage claim payments to landlords due to damages caused by program participants. Uh, upon vacating the unit. The maximum amount you can get is $3,000, but uh, up to the amount of your damages. The availability for this funding is for move out dates through the end of the year, but Mishta does anticipate extending this program beyond 2022. We're dropping into the chat now a link to Mishta's website that can give you more information about both of these programs. Next slide. So the last thing we have here is we do have four chat, uh, four items that are going into the chat. I see in the Q&A there's some questions about other programs. The first one is the COVID Emergency Rental Assistance website. And then next is the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund. Also, the, the links to our Housing Assessment and Resource Agency. This is the local agency in your area that can assist people who are experiencing difficulties, especially those who are experiencing homelessness and looking for housing. And then the last one is a link to Mishta's Housing Choice Voucher waiting list page. I know there were some questions there about that, so um, please take a look at those links if those are where your questions are. Uh, thank you. We have some other people who are coming on next to give some other presentations, but Lisa and I will be back soon to do Q&A for 30 whole minutes. Back to you, Van. Thank you so much, Deidre. Uh, it is so important that uh, Deidre show us all about the money. I really like uh, that bonus or incentive of $600 for signing up. I think that's fantastic. And uh, we certainly want everybody to know that there's money attached to the Housing Choice Voucher Program. And I think one of the key elements here that uh, cannot go unnoticed is the fact that this is probably some of the most reliable, reliable money uh, that you can get because you can depend on uh, the state of Michigan Housing Choice Vouchers program. It will drop every month. I, I've talked to this staff uh, without end. And they have assured me that when people sign up and they do what they're supposed to do, their money will drop every month. Is that correct, Deidre? That is correct. All right. Very Always good. Comes. Yes. All right, folks, let's move on. As Deidre mentioned, we have some of our special guests that are here to talk directly to you. And our first special guest is one of our valued partners. Mr. has a lot of valued partners because it, it takes a lot of folks to, to uh, serve the people of Michigan. But first up is DTE Energy, and they're going to talk to you about some important resources. Please welcome from DTE Energy, Ms. Lovey Wilson. Welcome, Lovey. Thank you, Van. I appreciate you having me today. Today, I'm gonna to be discussing some of our energy assistant programs. And first, let me start. My name is Lovey Wilson. I am a senior customer service analyst with DTE Energy. Um, we actually support um, in the area that I come from, um, our low income um, and our low income customers and seniors. So today I'm gonna to be going over a couple of slides um, just to uh, familiarize everyone with our energy, energy assistance relief and payment plans. Next slide, please. All right, so um, the first slide is in regards to the Michigan Department of Health and Human Service State Emergency Relief. Um, we refer to it as the SCR. Um, this SCR is offered all year round um, to household incomes at or below 150% of the federal poverty level. level. This is um, what we will refer our customers to receive, uh, to seek emergency assistance. Um, 
in the event that they've received a shutoff notice or if they're just behind on their statements or in their bills, um, you can complete an SER via the website or contact one of our agents that we have available that will assist in um, completing the application. Um, this is to assist with paying towards your past due bill. Um, and again, customers that are either have a disconnect notice or even if you're on a shutoff protection plan, you can apply for an SER. It is a one-time payment up to $4,000 per household. Um, and that includes more than just utilities. In the event that you do need the assistance when you, um, if, and you have a shutoff notice, once you apply for an SER, State Emergency Relief, it will grant you a 30-day hold to protect you from being shut off. And again, you can apply, apply for this via the My Bridges SER website. And you can type that in on your mobile device or your computer, um, and it will allow you to apply for an SER. Next slide, please. All right, um, this is our low income self sufficiency program that we refer to as LSP. Um, there are a few requirements for LSP. Um, first, you have to have an approved SER from the state of Michigan. Um, once you have that approved SER, um, we'll, we're able to um, refer you over to our partnering agencies. And the LSP program provides a fixed monthly payment, um, a low income payment um, that allows you to pay um, up to $130 a month. If you pay that $130 a month, you make your payments um, every month, there is an amount that will be posted towards the arrears on your account that will be applied towards the arrears on your account. Um, however, again, you must have a, an, approved, an approved SER. And then once you have that approved SER, you can contact us and we will refer you to our partner agencies. As of today, um, the agencies are no longer taking new applicants. Um, however, the new fiscal year begins on October the 1st um, and funds will be available. Go ahead, you can go to the next slide. All right, our low income payment plan, the benefits of that again, is an affordable fixed monthly payment. It is based on your income and energy usage. Um, customers will be enrolled on a budget plan that will not exceed $130, as I stated, for 24 months. Um, your arrears will be frozen. Um, and we do have dedicated customer service professionals that in the event that you have any questions or concerns in regards to your bill, you can contact us. And we also have um, a billing specialists available as well. This program helps eliminate any late fees, and any further disconnect. So um, it's a wonderful program. Um, the only um, requirement is that you meet um, the energy usage and the, um, of course, have the approved SER and you meet the um, financial obligation. Next slide, please. All right, home heating credit. Um, I do know that um, a lot of people think that home heating credits can only be applied for um, during the tax season. However, uh, we have received additional funding and because of the additional funding, you all can still apply or you can refer people to apply for their home heating credit up until September 30th, 2022. Um, this is available to customers at or below 110% of the federal poverty level. And um, you can contact United Way or the Accounting Aid Society. They can assist with um, completing the home heating credit if you don't have an actual tax preparer. And again, you can apply for this home heating credit that allows you to um, apply this amount that is given to you from the state on your gas bill for your gas usage. Um, again, you can contact United Way or the Accounting Aid Society to assist with applying for the home heating credit. And this is gonna be for the 2021 tax year. And of course, every year you can apply, but you must apply for the 2021 year by November, I'm sorry, September the 30th. Next slide, please. All right, reduce costs through energy efficiency. 
We have a few programs that is offered not only to our low income customers, but to our everyday customers. Um, if you need assistance in lowering costs, uh, the energy efficiency in your home. Um, for low income customers, if you're qualified, you can contact um, the agencies uh, listed. Well, they're not actually listed, but there is a website that you can go to um, and seek assistance um, as far as your hot water tanks, um, your furnaces. Um, you can also call the 1-866-796-0512 um, and schedule an appointment if you're low income and have someone to come out and actually uh, take a look at your home and your appliances. And if you qualify, um, being at the federal poverty level or 200% um, or below, you can have those um, appliances replaced. Now for our um, customers uh, that's just looking to reduce the cost in their home, we have where you can contact the same phone number and schedule a free home energy consultation. Um, as long as you're in a um, single home, a, a, a single dwelling home, not an apartment complex, but a single dwelling home, you can definitely contact the number and call us and we'll be more than happy to come out and um, take a look at your home to assist you with cutting costs. Um, uh, we also have what we call the appliance recycling program. If you have any old refrigerators or freezers, feel free to give us a call. Um, we'll, we're offering a $50 rebate and we'll come and remove those appliances from the home. You can contact us and we'll be more than happy to come out. Again, we do have um, these particular energy efficiency programs to help reduce the costs. Next slide, please. All right, we have two fast ways to get help. You can contact us 24 seven in the event you have any um, gas leaks, any emergencies such as power lines, down power lines, power outages. Our representatives are available 24 seven. However, in the event that you wanna contact us in regards to your billing, we are available Monday through Friday, 8 to 6 p.m. and on Saturdays from 8 to 2. Um, the number is listed 1-800-477-4747. And you can also tell us about your um, situation and if you need uh, any assistance, our representatives are available to assist. Now, if you in the, um, have critical needs such as food and childcare, you can definitely contact 211. Um, that is a United Way. They have a wealth of knowledge that is available. Um, they're connected to organizations throughout the state of Michigan, and they will refer you to agencies that you can seek assistance. Their trained operators will connect you to assistance of a range of needs. So again, if you need any assistance, you can contact 211 or feel free to contact us at DTE Energy, 1-800-477-4747. I wanna thank you all. And again, I will be available for questions. So have a wonderful day and thank you for having us. Hey, thank you for being with us on today, Lovey. Uh, and we really appreciate all of those valuable resources. Not, our, not only are we concerned about housing needs, but we're also concerned about the everyday basic needs of our Michiganders. So thank you again. All right, let's go to our next uh, guest who is not only a realtist and valued partner, but she's a valuable part of the landlord ecosystem. Here to share more resources is the president of the Greater Detroit Realtors Association, Ms. Tanisha Wilson. Welcome, Tanisha. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here and assist with this topic, Van. It's been a pleasure working with everyone. So um, uh, thank you to all the partners too. I just wanna okay. say again, I am Tanisha Wilson president of the Greater Detroit Realtors Association. We're a nonprofit trade organization and our members are brokers, agent, lenders, title companies, inspectors, lawyers, and all who participate in the real estate transaction. You can see we have uh, our website and uh, my phone number and contact information on the screen. You're welcome to check it out and refer to us as a resource. Uh, we're one of 90 local chapters of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers all across the United States. And so uh, we were formed back in 1947 when others would not allow African-Americans to participate in the real estate trade. 
Well, 75 years later, our mission is still strong, increasing homeownership for minorities and underserved. We represent buyers and sellers, but also landlords and tenants for sales and leases. We connect the parties to the transaction and help process it. So um, among some of the other hats I wear, I'm a director with the Detroit Association of Realtors. And we also assist landlords and tenants and investors with real estate and Section 8 or housing choice voucher situations. I'm also a hood housing counselor, a property manager, a fourth generation property owner, third generation landlord and notary. So I'm uniquely positioned to assist with this topic. Next slide. Um, I currently have um, two clients enrolled in the Housing Choice Voucher System. Um, Ms. Dorothy, she's been with us about four years. And Ms. Angela's um, been with me for five years and we haven't had any problems. I manage a few others, but prior to COVID, I managed about 25 units. And um, so when COVID came, I got rid of most of them, but I wanted to keep the Section 8 and of course those that were friends or family. And so it's been a pleasure to have direct deposit and not have to go out and pick up rent. The direct deposit is awesome for the uh, subsidized portion. And then a tenant can bring uh, either a money order or Zelle for the other amount. So, you know, who is a landlord? Uh, uh, landlords get bad raps. You know, sometimes they're seen as uh, Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol or Henry Potter in A Wonderful Life, you know, as a cold hearted villainous, capitalist, greedy, slumlord, or antagonistic. But um, it can be an investor, a corporation, but they're real human beings and, and may not, or they may have, may not have chosen to be a landlord. Uh, some situations will have someone, a landlord by default, perhaps their property is unmarketable or they're underwater. Uh, it could be a probate estate. Um, it could be a title issue, something that was inherited, or something that um, is uh, owned by some squabbling siblings who can't agree what to do with it. So uh, sometimes landlords are parents who purchased a property for their college student. And you know, if you go up to Lansing, buy something, rent it out to your, stu your student, but then after they graduate, you might keep it or sell it for a profit or bequeath it to a descendant, leaving a legacy of generational wealth. So it could be uh, individual or business. Uh, not all landlords are corporations or greedy property management companies. So, um, you know, my mom inherited five properties at the age of 31 and she didn't even drive. So the moment I turned 16, I got my driver's license. She instructed me to go pick up the rents. And I've been involved in rent and real estate in every manner uh, since I can remember. So I want you to know that our, our organization is a valuable resource. Uh, we are concierge for real estate transactions, including leases. And I can testify that I have not had any problems with any Section 8 tenants. They're just like regular other tenants. So you have my contact information. I'll put it in the chat, make sure you can reach me. But I just want you to notice Housing Choice Program, Housing Choice Voucher is a good program. So thank you for allowing me to be here. And back to you, Van. Thank you, Tanisha. We really appreciate that viewpoint as, as well as your personal and professional experiences. I think you represent a lot of folks that are here uh, wanting to get information about the Housing Choice Voucher Program. So thank you very much for joining us on today. Uh, our final special guest is uh, also a valued partner and someone that you will want to make sure you get his contact information because his organization is a fighter and advocate for landlords. Please welcome now to tell us more, it's Mr. Brian Westron of the Michigan uh, Association of Realtors. Welcome, Brian. Thank you so much, Van. I really appreciate you all having me on this program. Uh, it's 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 a wonderful partnership. Uh, Michigan Realtors, as, as some of you may know, uh, for the Realtors on the call, uh, we're a trade association with north of 35,000 members, and we have about 40, uh, 41 uh, local associations throughout the state. And really, our our goal, and and obviously you see the slide up here, is to be a resource for our members, but also a resource for the public. So when we talk about education, we're not just talking about 
agency law. We're also talking about what are your rights as a tenant. Uh, we also partner with the Rental Property Owners Association uh, on, a, on a variety of different issues. Uh, but really, pro other than advocacy, uh, legal affairs and getting involved on behalf of private property rights oriented issues is really one of the key core missions of the Michigan Realtors. Um, one of the things that I, I, I really wanted to talk about, you know, as, as, we, as we talk about the, the Housing Choice Voucher program is, is the market is changing. And as, as you all know, in the last two years, we've had uh, a, a really uh, a market that, that you couldn't list a property and sell it fast enough. It was just moving so quickly, but, but obviously we've, we've had inventory issues for a number of years. And the interest rates now that they are heading heading north uh, in the in the four and five percent range, um, housing choice and housing availability has never been more important. So you might think that you know realtors typically deal with people buying and selling you know their forever home, but the reality is is that many of our members also work as property managers, also work to help people uh, you know save for the future, um, which is why we're so proud of of some of the programs that we partnered with Mishta on, but also the recent passage of of the, of the uh, Michigan First Time Home Buyer Savings Account, which is a tax-free savings vehicle that allows people to sort of chart their course for home ownership in the future. So if, if those types of things are of interest to you, I do uh, encourage you to reach out to me uh, by email or by phone, uh, and we can talk further about them. But you know, one of the things advocacy-wise is, is identifying those issues that um, not only benefit the realtor member, uh, the property owner, uh, but also those those aspects that foster a healthy business climate in the state, because typically a healthy business climate in the state also equates to jobs and uh, a quality of life that is uh, is is higher than typically um, understood. So, uh, next slide, please. So, some of the areas that we've really been advocating for uh, over the last two years, obviously. Everyone experienced COVID, and um, you know one of the one of the things that a trade organization like ours and, and others was able to do was to turn up the volume on those those pieces that are important to the public. Obviously, the SARA funds and the availability of that that uh, assistance was really a key component during COVID for landlords and tenants alike. And without, I think, the, the collective voice of many of the advocates, uh, a lot of the people who benefited from those programs were, were really not going to get that information because it's just, it's, it's very complex and the processes can sometimes be daunting. And without the proper shepherding, a lot of people kind of turn away from those, those uh, situations or just end up giving up because they're kind of banging their head against the wall. So that's a big part of what we've been uh, really advocating for over the last two years is making sure that people understand the programs that are out there. Um, one of the key issues that we are working on right now as it relates to rental property is making sure that landlords have the full composite of their private property rights when they look at things like do they want to be long-term rental? Do they want to be uh, occasionally short-term rental? We want to make sure that rental freedom is, is out there for landlords, but also that um, the, the members of the public have different, different avenues of choice. So while that doesn't necessarily uh, wet itself to the housing choice uh, piece of this program, that's certainly something that we're working on. And we want to work on different avenues that local governments and um, and the uh, the property owner owner public um, can work together to not only incentivize new development but also create an, an environment where there is choice um, the other things that we've worked on in the past uh, no one wants to talk about bed bugs but uh, in bed bug infestation legislation uh, we worked on that in the past um, we've worked with the rental property owners association on on the frequency and detail of rental inspections uh, to make sure that there is uniformity there and that it is beneficial to not only the person who's going to be occupying a, a tenancy, but also uh, the landlord to make sure that it's not punitive. So um, we tried to really balance um, as, as a partner in the community. Uh, but one of the things, the key takeaways that I hope everybody on this call recognizes is that these partnerships uh, between public, private, and, and trade associations alike, they're, they're so important for uh, people to really kind of wrap their heads around and wrap their arms around as well, because while they they may seem complex at first, and I think obviously that that is uh, that's evidenced in some of the poll question results. A lot of people didn't understand the program, or they may have had a stigmatization uh, to the program. Uh, but the reality of it is, is, the more people know, the more people engage, 
uh, the more valuable these programs are. So uh, view the Michigan Realtors as a resource, view the Michigan Realtors as somebody that you can reach out to uh, and, and get answers or at least pointed in the right direction. So we're happy to be a partner. And uh, with that, Van, I'll send it back to you and uh, obviously happy to answer any questions in the future. Hey, thank you, Brian. Uh, it, it is so important that we have uh, advocacy people that uh, our landlords can go to for assistance. And so thank you uh, for that valuable information. Well, folks, as you can see, uh, we have various ways on the screen here that you can get connected uh, to the staff here uh, for our Housing Choice Voucher Program, as well as our special guest. In just a few moments, we're going to get started with our special bonus Q&A where we take some of your questions. And I tell you, uh, we have a lot of questions on today and we'll try and get to as many of them as we possibly can. As we get ready to go into that portion of our program, uh, we do want to thank our Housing Choice Voucher and Rental Assistance um, leaders, Ms. Uh, Kelly Rose, Lisa Kimis, and Deidre Butterworth. We really appreciate their leadership and for being a part of this value, uh, valuable program on today. We also want to thank our special partners, DTE Energy, Detroit Public Television TV, uh, Greater Detroit Realtors Association, and the Michigan Association of Realtors. Also want to thank our Mr. Outreach team of Bernie Johnson, Edwin Harlan, Rosemary Myatt, Tommy Scott, and yours truly. And finally, we also like to thank our communications team of Matthew Shaner, Anthony Bibbs, Anna Vakari, Katie Bach, and our special production team that always makes it happen of AMR, Ms. Jennifer Dickey and Aaron Whitbrocht. I like that name, Aaron, Aaron Whitbrocht. <laughs> thank you all for making this possible on today. All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started now with some of our questions. We won't uh, wait for a countdown uh, because we have so many questions that have already come through. So let's get started. Our first question to our panel of experts, uh, namely Lisa and uh, Deidre and perhaps Kelly. The first question says, once I am approved for the program, can my current tenant apply to get help with their rent while they are living here or is it for um, new applications looking for a place? Let me repeat that. Once I am approved for the program, can my current tenants apply to get help with their rent while they are living here or is it for new applications looking for a place? Thank you, Van. No, that's a that's a great question. So um, to address that, um, sorry, I lost my video. Sorry. Um, to address that question, um, it's it's it, there's actually two pieces to that question. So um, the in the housing choice voucher program, the rental assistance follows the family. So um, if if the family is currently participating in the program and they're residing. Um, if, they're per, they're, if they're participating in the program and they select your unit, um, then certainly we would go through the process to determine um, the unit um, meets all the program requirements in order for, um, for MISTA to um, issue payments on your behalf. Um, that's really when the landlord participation begins is when that HCV family selects your unit for participation. So um, if you're not currently participating and you have families that you've that you think may be in need of assistance. Um, certainly, um, we provided the link to our HCV waiting list webpage that will provide information as to what waiting lists are currently open. And then we also post, um, as we are opening um, other waiting lists um, to receive additional applications, um, we, we post that to that webpage as well. So um, I would certainly direct um, families who don't currently have a voucher but residing in your unit um, direct them to our, our waiting list webpage for more information on uh, waiting list openings um, and statuses. 
All right, thank you very much, Lisa. I hope you can fix that camera problem. We'd love to see your lovely face there. Our next question, can a voucher holder move their voucher from one agency to another within the same area? That being said, Grand Rapids Housing Commission or Kent Community Services to MISTA. Um, so I, I apologize again because I, I, I'm having difficulty with my video, but um, so MISTA has, um, MISTA has statewide jurisdiction, um, which means we can assist um, um, families in any county um, within the state of Michigan. So if a family, let's say from the Grand Rapids Housing Commission wishes to um, move outside of that, uh, outside of the Grand Rapids Housing Commission's jurisdiction, then yes, certainly they can request, um, you know, to what, what we call port into Mischief's jurisdiction. But generally when, when PH, it was Mischief being the statewide PHA and um, where we can operate in any county, there's also local PHAs that can operate within that city or county level. So we don't like to, um, you know, take on, we don't want to, um, how do you want to say, say this? We don't, we don't like to, uh, take families from them, so to speak, you know, if they can serve them in their jurisdiction, um, then they, then they should, um, but certainly if they move outside of that PHA's jurisdiction, absolutely, we can facilitate that portability process and, um, um, assume them into it, into our program. All right. Thank you very much. Let's go to our next question. This question comes from Ms. Sawyer. She says, hello, thank you for this platform. Can we rent to a family member who has a voucher? So um, one of the, um, one of the uh, uh, regulations as it relates to um, the relationship between the owner of the rental unit and the actual HCV family is HUD prohibits um, uh, HUD prohibits um, families to HCV families to rent units that are owned by um, prohibited relatives, which um, which would be the mother of the HCV family, you know, of the family, uh, uh, the father, a grandfather, a grandmother, um, sister, brother, step family or in-laws. So in general, it's prohibited to rent from a relative um, as defined by um, HUD regulations and MISTA policy. However, um, if it's necessary um, as a reasonable accommodation for an individual or family with disabilities, then it is allowable under the regulation. Thank you, Lisa. Let's go to our next question. This question comes from Ms. Summers. She says, I'm purchasing a Section 8 home from a previous property manager. How do I go about getting payments remitted to me? Another very good question. Um, if this is a, um, if, if this is a MISHTA um, um, family in this unit that you're purchasing and under a MISHTA housing assistance, um, payment contract um, with the previous owner. The 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 first the first um, uh, person or entity to reach out to it would be that Mishta housing agent um, because the Mishta housing agent would work with um, the current landlord, the current owner of that rental property, and then you as the prospective buyer to ensure that um, the proper documentation um, is completed in order for you as the new owner to basically what we call assume that HAP contract um, for that family. So the first step is for the current landlord to, as well as yourself, is to reach out to the Michigan Housing Agents. So they can facilitate that property, that process so that the change in ownership can take place in our system. So payments then can commence to the new owner of the property. All right, very good. And I believe there's a link in the chat area where they can locate uh, the housing agents in their community. Correct. All right. As a matter of fact, this next question from Roy is along those lines. Is there a web page with all of the helpful links on it? How can people get to those links after this program, I guess, is, is the question. Sure. Deidre, do you want to address that question? Sure. Uh, thanks, Lisa. Uh, we 
uh, provided many links here in the chat today, but also if you click on MISHTA's website, so you go to michigan.gov forward slash MISHTA, M-S-H-D-A, and scroll down, there's a bright yellow box that says housing choice vouchers. If you click on that uh, box, it will take you to um, our housing choice voucher page and there is a landlord page within there. These links are available on that website and can give you lots of other information that we maybe haven't gotten to today. Thank you, Deidre. And I see uh, once again in our chat, uh, the information is there to link to MISTA, which will have uh, these links uh, available for you. Let's get to our next question now. And I, I think this one will uh, be directed to you, Deidre. It says, why doesn't MISTA make the tenant more accountable for damage? Why are they allowed to go house to house damaging them? Not all, but I've had several that do. So there's two things here. The first point is making sure when you have a MISHTA housing choice voucher participant that when these things are happening, that you're reaching out to the housing agent right away. Make sure you're documenting the damages and providing that information to your housing agent so that we can take appropriate action. Uh, we don't like to hear that this is what's happening. So also a reminder, if it does happen, please also reach out to your housing agent because we are reimbursing you for those damages up to $3,000. The links are again in the chat for that. And we do want to help and just make sure that you're staying in contact and documenting what's happening. Great, great. And I thought I heard you say that uh, there's some money for damages up to $3,000. So that's, that's a good thing. All right, let's go to our next question. This one comes from David. He says, I'm working with several clients who have vouchers, but I'm having a difficult time finding the housing. Is there an available listing of houses that are available for my clients? The MLS does not contain those properties. What do you say to that? So this is Lisa again. Um, certainly, I, I would refer that wherever the, these properties are located, wherever counties they're located in, um, reach out to our, our MISHTA housing agents um, um, because they, they have resources available for um, rental units that um, may be available within their counties. It could be um, you know, um, uh, with private landlords or multifamily properties where we have residents in those units. Um, again, market, market the, the, the proper or um, utilize the affordablehousing.com registry. Um, we provided it as a resource for our landlords early in the present presentation, but that's also a registry we um, commonly um, uh, encourage our families to utilize as well because it um, gives them the opportunity to um, you know, search for housing throughout the state of Michigan. Um, you know, to utilize their, their voucher. And so um, I would certainly, again, connect with um, um, the Mishta housing agent in the counties where these folks are searching, um, as well as that affordablehousing.com registry. All right, you heard it, folks. Uh, our next question comes from Gina. She wants to know, what happens if the tenant doesn't pay their portion? Is the normal eviction process allowed according to the lease agreement? It, it is, um, and something that Deidre touched briefly um, on earlier in her um, myth-busting session. So yes, you, you as the um, owner or of uh, the rental unit, um, you um, certainly um, are required to enforce the lease obligations onto the family. Um, however, we strongly encourage um, our landlords um, to reach out to the housing agent because they at times can, can step in um, and mitigate some of those issues because, um, you know, certainly, you know, we're, we're all about, we're all in the business to, to house our families and those most in need in, in, in this great state. So where we can and where we can step in and we can mitigate issues, um, we would want to do that. Um, and certainly if, if you're going to be issuing any lease violations, whether it be for non-payment or rent or something else, it's very important that you get that information to the MISTA housing agent so they have it um, because um, you know the housing agent then is required to enforce the HCD program rules on the family. But um, many times if, if the housing agents have made aware of this sooner than later, um, they can step in and, and they can you know work with you, work with the family um, to try to figure out you know options 
um, or if there's, you know, if the family has fallen on hard times that maybe they need um, some additional assistance, um, you know, from um, that they may be eligible for from other um, agencies, you know, the housing agent can connect them or MISHTA staff can connect them because certainly, um, you know, again, we're in the business to, to house our families, um, not, not um, you know, lose them through the eviction process. Yeah, so it, it sounds to me that that housing agent is a key component of, of the process uh, when you're dealing with some of these uh, potential issues. All right, very good. All right, uh, Lisa and Deidre, I'm, I'm looking at some of these questions. There's some outstanding questions coming from our audience. And the next one is from uh, Pascaline. Uh, I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. It says, if your property is already inspected and registered with the city, is that different from HCV's inspection? Will it have to be inspected again? Uh, that's a... Another very great question, um, Van. So um, yes, it's important to note that um, the, the local city code um, may vary from what housing quality standards or the HCV inspection requires. So um, even though your unit um, may have been inspected by the city um, as required in many municipalities, um, um, it still has to undergo the um, HQ for this program, it, it must still undergo the HQS inspection to ensure it meets the HUD requirements and MISTA requirements that we identify in our um, HQS manual. So, um, so that, that inspection, yes, would still have to take place. All right, you heard it. The inspection still has to take place. All right, very good. Our next question comes from Rhonda. She wants to know what if the tenant is already in the house and neither the landlord or tenant is res registered which with HCV. Is it too late to apply? Um, so I think I, I touched briefly on this in a, in a previous um, question, but so the, the family would certainly, um, you know, have the opportunity to apply to, to, to the waiting list, um, you know, if it's, if it's open. So certainly, um, we would encourage um, you as the landlord or the family to um, go to our webpage um, as it relates to our waiting list, um, um, our waiting list information, um, what waiting lists are currently open, what, what ones are going to be opening in the future, because um, it really begins with, again, that family um, being eligible for the HCV program and then selecting the units. But certainly if they're on the waiting list um, and they're selected, um, and they're determined eligible and they're in your unit at, in the unit um, you know, passes inspection, then certainly we can um, um, approve um, the family for program participation and then you as the landlord for program participation. Okay, so it's important to uh, get that process started as soon as possible. All right, uh, next question comes from Michael. He wants to know how does the utility facet work with the tenant? Who is responsible? I've noticed that this is an area tenant not pay. If things get tight, then it defaults back on the landlord. So uh, this could be you, a Deidre, or someone from DTE. Deidre, do you want to address this one? Sure. So, you know, you get to choose who pays what utilities. So it's part of, you know, how we determine what your contract rent is. So we take, you know, what the monthly rental amount is, plus whatever utilities are the tenant's responsibility to determine how much uh, the unit it costs for determining affordability. So you do have a cap here and that you can't go about beyond affordability or what's considered reasonable for rent in your area but it is definitely in your court as a landlord to determine which piece of the uh, utility puzzle belongs to you and which part is for the tenant. All and right, to, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just gonna add to that. Um, there, there, are certain, there are certain instances for some families, um, depending um, on their income level, where um, MISTA, um, you know, is paying the full rent to you as, a, as the owner of the property, and then in also issuing the family um, a utility assistance payment 
um, each month. Um, and it, the, those payments are issued to the family with the intent to them to use those um, to pay for um, their utility bills. Unfortunately, our, our utility assistance payment to family may not always cover all the utilities um, um, or for that unit for that month, but um, we certainly, um, for some of our families, we, we do issue those payments, but um, I think Lovey also provided some good information with what DTE has to offer um, for um, emergency assistance for those for uh, for families that fall into um, those situations as well. All right, thank you, Deidre. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, just so uh, our audience knows, uh, we have about fifteen minutes remaining in our special bonus Q&A portion here. So we'll get to as many questions as we can uh, because we uh, started our, our program a little late in terms of the Q&A portion. So we got about 15 minutes to go. But our next question comes from Joe. It says the CIRA program does not supply the landlord with a confirmation email like they do the tenant. So we rely on the tenant to notify us of the amount and approval of the CIRA application. Why are we not CC'd or included in this? Can you talk to a little bit about uh, the CIRA process? I, I see Kelly uh, jumping in there. Kelly, can you answer that question? Sure. Um, in most situations, the landlord is sent the approval email at the same time that the tenant is. Um, obviously, I can't uh, you know, talk to the specific situation, but in most cases, the landlord is um, notified at the same time as the tenant. Um, if, if you weren't contacted about this, we would encourage you to reach out to the service agency um, that you've provided, you know, that you've uh, sent, you know, the information to regarding your SARA application um, to make sure um, that you're, you know, in communication with them. Because if the, if the landlord does fill out all the paperwork related to SARA, then the tenant or then the payment goes directly to the landlord uh, for the SARA payments. So, um, you know, just please reach out to your service agency that's processing your application um, if you have questions um, about the status of the application. All right, thank you very much, Kelly. Uh, let's go to our next question. It says, so the, the tenant loses their job and it takes Mr. a while to adjust rent payment percentage. How far back will Mr. go? This happened to me and I lost a month's rent. So they wanna know if a person, their tenant loses their job and gets behind, um, how it impacts them and uh, how far will Mr. go back to, uh, to, I believe, catch up on those payments? Yeah, sure, that's a very good question as well. And so um, it really, um, it's, it's really important for our families to, um, and to immediately report any changes in their income or their family composition that would, that would affect their income um, immediately to their housing agent. Um, um, if they report immediately to the housing agent, um, then um, generally the change to the case can uh, can occur the first of the month following, you know, reporting of, of that change. So there, so as to not, um, you know, put the family in a, um, you know, behind the eight ball, so to speak, as it relates to their portion of the rent, and then certainly the landlord um, um, as well. So it's it's really key. Um, for our families to ensure they're quickly and properly reporting the income, um, because um, certainly at times, um, you know, our, the families are delayed in, in reporting that um, for whatever reason. Um, so um, certainly it's, it's the, the key piece is to have them report, for them to report promptly um, so that that can, that can trigger um, the process for the housing agent to, to facilitate that change. All right, very good. Let's go to our next question coming from Tamara. It says, how is the new landlord to your program selected to receive the incentive of $600? I think we'll uh, go to Deidre for that. How is the new landlord to your program selected to receive the incentive of $600? So it can be a current landlord who's already participating or a new landlord. It is just for any new housing choice voucher move-in starting June 1st through the end of this year. So if you opt to make your unit available for the housing choice voucher program participants and families, 
uh, as soon as you have a move in, then we give you that money uh, by direct deposit with your first payment. All right. Very good. All right, we got some, some still some good questions coming here. So I hope you're ready. Next question comes from Mark. He says, I have leased to low income in South Macomb for years. How do I get my current tenants qualified for a housing choice voucher? And if approved, would I be eligible for the move in incentive? Yep, so again, um, um, if the families are currently not participating in um, MISTA's HCV program, um, they would have to apply to the waiting list um, when it is open um, and then selected um, and determined eligible for the program. So if they're not currently participating, um, that's, that's really the, um, the triggering event um, um, for the beginning of the process. Now there are other, um, uh, there's certainly other um, PHAs um, in the area that may be um, um, accepting applications at this time. Right now um, in Macomb County, if, if, um, um, the waiting list is, is closed, but certainly, um, you know, as I would, again, can, you know, refer them to our waiting list page because we do open um, our waiting list uh, frequently throughout the, throughout the year to accept new applications. So, um, Again, yeah, I just have them continue to look at our waiting list page for, for openings in their area. That's a very good point, uh, Lisa. Are, are, are people encouraged to uh, give you their email? Like, how do they know how to receive that information about the waiting list? Yeah, so when, um, when we are opening um, uh, waiting lists, um, we, uh, we, we, we have some great outreach efforts through our Mishta communication teams where we, um, we provide notification to um, our social media pages, um, the local social media pages in those counties. We have, um, uh, uh, we send it to current uh, tenants on our program that we have a, um, email addresses to, to share with their family and friends. Um, we send it to our current landlords in those counties to, to, to notify their, their current participants, or excuse me, their current um, renters or any other individuals they may be aware of. So we try to cast that net out very far and do um, um, outreach efforts um, prior to, during, um, and during um, the time that the waiting list is open so that families at that local community level um, are made aware of, of the opening of, of that specific list. Um, and, and that includes also sending um, flyers out to our local partners in the community. So our continuum care agencies, uh, um, the education system, um, the um, area agencies on agency, we, we really cast the net out to get all of our community partners notified so they can share with their clients um, um, and the families that they're serving so that they have the opportunity to apply when the waiting list is open. All right, very good. All right, let's go to our next question. Uh, this is a question from Roger. He says, I have a duplex that rents for $1,200 per side. Both units are currently occupied and both are struggling to make rent. I would like to help my current tenants stay in my units. Is this program good for us? Well, again, I'd, I'd have to say, you know, if they're not current HCV participants, um, um, they, you know, for the for the HCV program, you know, they'd have to apply and be selected for the HCV program for us to start assistance um, in that manner. But um, I see Kelly has jumped out, and I think she has more information to share um, for other opportunities as well. Uh, yes, thanks, Lisa. Uh, so we would encourage you to pass along the COVID emergency rental assistance information to your tenants. Um, so the SARA program can help get uh, tenants caught back up on their rent. Um, and we, that application period is closing soon. So the SARA program, um, we've been operating it for more than 18 months now, um, and we're getting towards the end of that program. So tenants have until June 30th, so the end of this month, so just a week from now, we will be closing that application period. So that really is the, the end time frame for tenants to be able to apply. So if you have tenants that are behind on their rent right now, uh, please, um, you can, it's a pretty simple website. It's michigan.gov slash C-E-R-A. 
um, to be able to, um, to find the Sarah website and to be able to apply. It's a pretty quick process to apply and we encourage you to pass that information along to your tenants so that they can apply. All right, very good. This next question comes from Yan. If the landlord pays the utilities for the section eight tenants, can the landlord apply for the utility subsidy on behalf of the tenants? So I'm not sure if that's a HCV or if that's a DTE question. Let me repeat that. If the landlord pays the utilities for the section eight tenants, can the landlord apply for the utility subsidy on behalf of the tenants? So this is Lisa again. So as it relates to the HCV program, if, if, the, if the landlord is going to include all the utilities in the rent that they're requesting, so i.e. the landlord's paying all the utilities, um, then from on, Mischa's, um, on the MISCHA side of things, the voucher side of things, you know, the landlord could not qualify for utility assistance um, um, for that purpose. So if the landlord's stating they're gonna pay the utilities, then they they're responsible for the utilities um, under the lease agreement. And certainly, um, you know, that could be reflective in the rent that they're um, requesting for that unit um, since they are paying, you know, the entire utility amount for that unit. but. Um, I don't know if Lovey has more to um, answer on the DT end of things, if, if, the, if the owner would be eligible for any of their programs. Yes. Um, so we don't have any programs that's geared towards our landlords. Unfortunately, we would refer, um, um, we would ask that they refer their tenants to us for assistance. Um, so we don't provide additional assistance for landlords. Thank you, Lovey. Since I have you uh, on yeah. here, uh, there's a question that wants to know, can apartment complexes take advantage of the DTE appliance recycle rebate program? No, apartment complexes cannot um, take advantage of the DTE recycle program. And as I stated earlier, I want to, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I, um, brought um, up the recycle program where they could uh, contact us to have refrigerators um, removed and receive a rebate. Um, those appliances have to be working appliances to remove those and receive that rebate. And to go back to your question, no, um, we will not come out to an apartment complex. It has to be a single um, dwelling, a single dwelling home. That's important to note. Thank you very much, uh, Lovey. All right, let's get back to uh, just a few more questions here. The next question from Roy asks, we own a mobile home village. Does Housing Choice Voucher apply to that type of housing? Um, so this is Lisa again. Um, it, yes, it can. Um, generally, um, when, we, um, when we look at um, that unit, type and structure, what we say is, um, it, you know, if the, if the mobile home lot rent and then the rent to, and then the rent for um, the unit for um, the, the lot rent, in addition to the, the rent itself, if it's all combined into one rent, um, um, then we will approve it for tenancy. So they, you'd have to combine the lot rent into um, the rent that you're requesting. Um, um, for the unit itself, um, it's all combined into one um, contract rent, so to speak, then yes, we, um, um, it, is, it is a unit type that we can approve for, um, for the voucher program. All right, very good. Next question from Megan wants to know, can the up to 3,000 in funds available for damages be used to cover utility bills that the tenant has left behind? Um, so that is that is one thing that um, the damage claim incentive program um, does not cover. Um, it does it specifically covers um, damages to the unit um, above wear and tear of which the utility um, excuse me of which the security deposit does not cover. Um, now certainly if there if um, if they if there's damages to the unit as a result of of um, tenant not paying utilities, um, you know, I, I think we've 
um, had instance where maybe there was, um, you know, a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a pipe that burst and caused um, damages, then it's certainly an, an eligible um, request. But um, but the damage claim itself, um, you know, that that incentive program is, um, does not pay for um, you know the utilities that are are unpaid by the by the family. All right, thank you very much. This next question comes from Rhonda. She asks, the landlord is part of HCV and the tenant is part of HCV. Does the tenant have to be matched to a landlord or can they choose their own living quarters and HCV initiatives initiates their portion of the payments to the landlord? Let me repeat that. The landlord is part of HCV program and the tenant is part of HCV. Does the tenant have to be matched to a landlord or can they choose their own living quarters and HCV initiates their portion of the payments to the landlord? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, you no, know, it's, it's the housing choice voucher program. So our families have the, the choice of um, conducting their unit search um, and selecting the unit that they wish to occupy, which again, um, can be a single family home, an apartment, a duplex and a town home. Um, and then again, provided that your unit uh, meets the requirements, then we're able to um, approve it for tenancy. So we don't necessarily pair up um, uh, uh, tenants. Um, the tenants does not necessarily have to be paired up with the landlord. They do their housing search, but certainly you as a landlord with available rental properties, we provide your, your, your resource and contact information to our families as they're conducting their search. All right, just two more questions. We got a whole lot more, but we're just gonna uh, give you two more and then we'll get ready to wrap up. This next question is from Heather. She wants to know who do we contact if we have an issue getting a resolution through an agency or specialist? So if I understand the question, I, I believe if, if, uh, if you're a current um, landlord or tenant and you're and with the MISTA program and um, if you are having issues or concerns with um, the MISTA housing agent that's administering the case, um, then certainly um, you can reach out to myself um, and to Deidre so that we can um, intervene and um, you know, work with you at, as well as the, the housing agent for a resolution. All right. And uh, wow, got two, two great questions here. Uh, one says before the section eight or prior to the section eight uh, program, you had to have a stove and refrigerator in the unit uh, for inspection when tenant is to or plans to provide. Is that the case now with the housing choice voucher? Do you have to have uh, your major appliances uh, in the unit as a part of the inspection process. Um, so if the if the tenant, um, according to the landlord and tenant lease, if the tenant is responsible for supplying um, the stove and refrigerator, um, the inspection can still take place of the unit um, without those two appliances being um, you know present and in the unit. But ultimately, before payments can commence. Um, so the inspection can take place, the inspection can, uh, can pass um, based on all other um, inspection requirements, um, but before payments can commence for that unit, the, the family does have to have them um, in place um, and confirmation of such has to be provided to the MISTA housing agent. So for the initial inspection to take place, no, we don't require it because um, um, we, we wait until the unit passes and then we get the family time to to place the, the appliances in the unit so that payments can commence. All right, very good. And here's the final question. Um, it says, if a recipient loses their voucher, damages the rental unit, will Mr. still cover damages? Yes, yes. So if, if, if it's, um, if, if the family vacates the unit and let's, let's say they, um, they, they lose their rental assistance um, um, with MISHTA. Um, yes, the, the owner is still eligible to request damage claims again for um, 
damages to the unit above normal wear and tear um, for which the security deposit does not cover. All right, thank you very much. Well, folks, uh, we really appreciate you being a part of this uh, fantastic program uh, tonight uh, with an emphasis on our landlords. And uh, we really appreciate uh, the expertise coming from Kelly Rose and her staff, Lisa Chemis and Deidre Butterworth. We want to also thank all of our special guests for joining us on tonight. Uh, I do want to pose a, a question to our Housing Choice Voucher uh, team members, uh, and it's basically around um, those uh, questions that we had in uh, tonight. We had so many, many questions. Is there a process whereby those questions that weren't answered, uh, uh, how can people, uh, or is there a place where people can go uh, to find out uh, if you are able to respond to their questions since we weren't able to get to everyone's tonight? Yeah, that's a great question. Yep, it's, a, it's our intent, myself and Deidre, to gather um, you know, the Q and A's, um, the ones that we answered in addition to the ones we weren't able to get to tonight um, and, um, and post the, those Q and A's to our MISTA webpage along with um, this, um, this uh, video as, as well. And again, I apologize uh -huh. to everyone out there that I, I lost video and, and cannot uh, um, connect that way, but certainly, yep, we plan to um, address those uh, Q and A's that um, we could not get to tonight and post those to our webpage. All right, so you can go to Mr.'s webpage and uh, they're going to personally go through the questions that we weren't able to answer during our special uh, Q&A period here. And if you would like to take a look at this uh, program again, it will be available on our website as well as YouTube. So uh, there, there are various ways you can go back and glean from the information tonight uh, because we want you to arm yourselves with as much information as possible uh, because there are many people out there that need the services of good landlords and the uh, Housing Choice Voucher uh, program and team members and leaders are here to assist you and by all means, uh, we'd love to have you a part of our Mr. Family. So with that, folks, uh, we're going to uh, call it a night. But thank you so very much for being a part of this. And we look forward to having you 